If you'd like to learn more about light painting photography using an entry-level DSLR like this one right here, which happens to be the Nikon D3400, then stay tuned. This video is for you. Similar to my other videos, I'm going to start off by level setting. Now it's relatively warm where I live in the world today. We're probably in the mid 80s and that's Fahrenheit and it's relatively humid. It's been raining kind of on and off today, but the clouds are starting to pass and the sun's starting to set. Temperature is going to be relatively warm tonight and that's what's prompted me to do this light painting video. Now I've mentioned this in other videos in the past and many of you had said, where's it at? We're looking forward to it and that's what I'm going to do today. Now here's the game plan. I'm going to start off by talking about what is light painting photography and then I'm going to go over the specific supplies you're going to need. I'm going to jump into the camera settings and I'm going to also talk about specific techniques that you can use to generate some of those cool light images. When I'm done with that, I'm going to do a handful of demo shots and then finish up with a few final thoughts. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. What is light painting photography? Well, it's using any light source to enhance any image you want taken at night. That's really the gist of it. You can use anything and create these awesome images. I've done it before and that's really what I wanna share with you. Now, that's just a quick flyover of what light painting photography is. And I'm gonna jump right into the supplies right now. So when we talk about supplies, what do we use to try and create these cool, awesome images? Well, I'm gonna start off with the light tube. Okay, what is this right here? This is really just a fluorescent tube protector. That's all this is. And you might be thinking, where can you get them at? Well, they sell these all over the place in the United States anywhere at the big box stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, and Menards. That's where I got this from. It runs like three or four dollars. It's really not that expensive at all. And it's clear. Now you're thinking to yourself, if it's clear, why does it look white, right? Well, it looks white because I made it this way. Now, why would I make it this way? Well, I wanted to make it this way so that way the light, when you put the flashlight in on one side, it doesn't just spill outside the tube. You want it to stay in the tube. Now you're probably thinking, well, how did I get it this way? Well, got a very special tool to make that happen. Sandpaper. That's all it is, right? This is some coarse sandpaper here, and I just roughed the tube up. Probably spent maybe 10 or 15 minutes doing it, and something I would advise is get yourself some gloves, and you may want to do it outside because it can be a little messy. But after roughing it up, you end up with a tube like this right here. Now when it's opaque and the flashlight's going in on one side, it helps to keep the light in the tube. Something I want you to understand though is that the light will come out the other end. And what we really want to do is try to reflect that light back into the tube. So how do we do that? Well, it's the next piece of the supply I want to talk about here, okay? And that's this. It's just a little piece of tin foil. That's all it is. Now, this little piece of tin foil, I just put on the cap. It's just like a cap to this tube, right? Kind of goes on like that. And then you can use a rubber band to hold that tin foil in place, and it helps to reflect the light back into the tube, and it works great. Okay, so that leads me to, while I'm still talking about the tubes, I want to talk about, you might be thinking, are there some other color choices? And there are. If you get with an electrician or perhaps a specialty store, you might see colors like this. This is blue, and I've got a... Right next to it is an orange one right here. Now I just picked these up from an electrician. I also have a green one. I don't really know if I'm gonna get into these colors or not, but at least I have them at my disposal. Check the description below as well because I may post some links to some of these different tubes if I see them on Amazon, that kind of thing, and if it'll help you out. Now, this leads me to my next item, and that is the flashlight. Now the flashlight doesn't have to be anything special. It should be something relatively powerful and keep fresh batteries in it. This is just an LED flashlight and it's powered by three AAA batteries. Now I want you to know that this fits inside my tube, but it's not a perfect fit. I don't know how well we can see that, but I got some play in there. It's not a huge deal, okay? I can just pinch, you can see me doing it right here. I can pinch this tube around the flashlight and it works great. See, that's it. You just hold them together and it works out fine. So. The flashlight, the tubes, um, something else I picked up here. You don't necessarily need this as a supply. I just want to show you some other light sources. It's a little toy saver. I picked this up on clearance like a couple years ago for like three bucks. It's an LED tube. It's going to light up, and this one happens to be green. I got a blue one sitting next to it. Again, I'm not sure how well I'm going to uh, use these tonight, but I have them if I want to try to experiment and have some fun with them. So 
Now, there's something else I want to talk about when it comes to the supplies, and that's the camera. This is the obvious one, right? You at least need a camera. Now, this is considered an entry-level camera from Nikon, and it's the D3400 model. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, I featured this camera in a lot of them. And the reason is, it's simple, it's capable, and it works great. I don't really have any issues with it. Nikon's got the D3500 out right now. What I want you to understand is it doesn't really matter what camera you have. You can have an entry-level Canon or an entry-level Sony or an entry-level Panasonic. It really doesn't matter. What we're going to talk about will be the concepts of how to make this happen. And that's really what I want to focus on here. Just know it's not equipment dependent. Now, I just have the basic 18 to 55 kit lens on here, so it's nothing special. But just know you just need a camera of any type to make this happen. Now, I will say this. This camera, I'm going to leverage it in bulb mode. Okay? So, most cameras can go into bulb mode, and if not, you can at least open that shutter for maybe 30 seconds on your camera. You just have to look at it. Now, this camera is sitting on, side, on top of the tripod. Now, this is the last uh, item I'm really going to talk about from a supply perspective. Now, ensure you have a tripod because, again, this shutter is going to uh, stay open for a long time, so it's going to be stabilized on something. I have a review video on various tripods. If you haven't seen it, I'll post that in the description below. Take a look at it. This is just my KNF Concept tripod and it works well. With all that said, we've covered the supplies here, and I'm going to get into settings on the camera, and then it, we're going to talk about the specific techniques of how to use some of these tubes. Let's make that happen. We want to start off by ensuring that we are in manual mode, and on my dial, again, this is the 3000 series camera, but it's going to be very similar for other Nikon cameras. It's going to be denoted by the letter M. Just ensure that you are in manual mode. As we look at the back of the camera, we want to make a few adjustments. The first thing I want you to note is the letter M here in the upper left hand corner. Now this tells us we're in manual mode and this is a result of us changing the dial on the top of the camera. This is right where we want to be. The first setting we're going to change is the shutter speed. We're currently set for 1 60th of a second and we want to slow that down. Now on this camera I can rotate the dial in the upper right hand portion right here where my thumb's tapping. I'm just going to turn this clockwise and you'll see that the shutter starts to slow down. And just keep going. We're in the seconds right here and I'm going to take it all the way down and stop at 30 seconds. Now I'm doing this because I want you to understand that this is the slowest predefined amount of time this camera will allow us to set the shutter open without going into bulb mode. Now if I rotate one more stop to the right you'll see I'm in bulb mode. And this is where we want to be. Again, this will allow us to open and close the shutter whenever we want. And I'm going to make use of our wireless remote and have a lot of fun in this mode. The next setting we want to change is the aperture. We're currently set to f4. And we're going to want to close this down a little bit. Now in this particular camera, right where my finger's tapping, there's a small button with a small plus and minus sign on it. If I hold this button down, I can rotate the dial and quickly change the aperture. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this for an f8, keeping in mind that you can go with an f9 if you want, or a 10, or maybe you can cut back and do a 7.1 or a 6.3. There is no exact number here, I just feel that f8 is a good sweet spot for this 18 to 55 kit lens. The next setting I'm going to change is the ISO. We're currently set for 100, and under normal conditions that would be great because it'll produce the least amount of noise. However, since we're going to be shooting in the dark, I want the sensor to be a little more sensitive to light, so I'm going to increase that number. Now in this model, the D3400, I have a function button right over here where my finger is tapping. I can hold this function button down, rotate the dial, and quickly change the ISO. I'm going to show you though how you can do it if you're using something like the D3500, or if you just don't have a function button or you want to use the menu system. If you press the menu button right here, go into the shooting menu, and you'll see an option for ISO sensitivity settings. If I select that, you'll see where I can change the ISO. I go in here and I can select whatever ISO I want. Again, I'm going to go with 400 because I feel that that's good. Keeping in mind that there is no one right answer. You can go with 200 if you want, or if you really want to get sensitive, go 800. I'm going to go back to our main display here, and now our camera is set and ready. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the techniques we can use with the light tube. Understanding proper technique to capture some awesome images at night is important. Now you might get out there and you're going to open up your shutter and take your light source and move it around and close your shutter down. Get behind the camera, look at it and go, hmm, it's really nothing special, right? 
I don't want you to be discouraged. This takes a little bit of effort and practice, but I assure you that you'll get there. Now I want to cover the technique that I'm going to use to capture some of these images tonight, and I want to do it now because I won't really have any video tonight because it's going to be dark. You won't see me at all. So what am I going to do? Well, I've got my camera sitting on the tripod. Now there's woods off to my side, so I plan to go back into those woods, and I'm hoping to find maybe a clearing or two with some big trees in it and really try to uh, make for a nice scene, if you will. Now I know there's also a bench back in there I plan to use, and I think there's a bridge. I just have to see what's available. But nonetheless, over to my side here, I have the camera sitting on a tripod. I'm gonna start off by being on that side of the camera. My camera's gonna be in autofocus mode, and I'm gonna use my flashlight here, okay? The idea is I'm gonna use my flashlight, I'm gonna shine it on the subject, which again, I think I'm gonna start off with a big tree if I can find one, and I'm gonna lock focus on that tree. Now once I lock focus, I'm gonna switch back to manual focus mode. It's important that you understand this and do that because if you don't, when you go to take your shot, the camera's gonna to try to lock focus and it's gonna be pitch black. It won't be able to lock focus on anything and you're not gonna really have a good image at all. So it's important, again, to lock focus. Take the flashlight, turn it on, shine it on your subject, lock your focus, switch to manual focus mode, okay? That's how I'm gonna start off tonight. Then I'm gonna have my wireless shutter with me. I'm gonna come back behind my subject, and again, it's gonna be a tree. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flashlight, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna put it inside this light tube, okay? Now, you may not be able to see it that well because we got daylight out here, but at night, this thing is gonna glow. So I've got it set up like this. I've got the wireless remote in this hand over here, and I'm gonna start off by putting this behind the tree so it's not visible. And then I'm gonna open up the shutter. And at that point, I can move this light source from around the tree. Now, I want you to understand this technique. It's kind of important to understand this, but if you want to make a circle around the tree, you're probably thinking, hey, your arm just doesn't go all that way, right? So the technique is this. Take your arm, turn your thumb down like this, and hold it, just like that. Now again, I'm behind the tree, I open up the shutter, and then I start to rotate, just like that, and it allows me to rotate all the way around, right? Now, understand something else about this technique. You can go kind of slow with it and you'll get more light, or you go a little faster with it and you don't get as much light. So um, just play with that, have some fun with it. And when you're done, you can do things like this, which is kind of a nice little wave and you can move it off the scene. So I plan on doing things just like that and having some fun with it. Now I know that there's a bench back in there and I plan to use that bench tonight my friend John is coming to help me out, and I'm going to have John sitting in that bench, and I'm going to be behind the bench. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to have my camera set up. I'm going to lock focus on John. I'm going to get back behind John right here, and I'm just going to be behind that bench. I'm going to be wearing some dark colored clothes as well. And then I'm just going to rotate slowly over John to try to make that arc. Now, I'm not sure what kind of shot we're going to get from that, but I'm just going to have some fun. That's really the goal here. There's so many variations. You can add colors. Again, I got the other color light tubes. I got those little sabers. Um, I got a little red flashing light I'm going to try to use. Just let your mind go wild. That's what it's all about. This is about creativity and having fun. Now, I don't expect to get a bunch of shots um, just because I'm going to spend quite a bit of time getting things set up and it's going to get late. But I hope to walk away with maybe a half dozen shots or so and um, hopefully I capture something that's pretty cool. So I'm getting ready to prepare to go back into the woods and have some fun, and let's just see what we come up with. I found the perfect location. This is what I was looking for back in the woods. I got one big tree right here, and really this is just a sample and demo um, what this light tube can do. Now, the sun is going down, and in probably the next 30 minutes or so, it's gonna be completely dark. So I just wanna show you, while we still have a little bit of daylight as a follow-up, to that uh, demonstration of the technique. So again, now I found the place, this is how it's gonna work out. So I'm actually sitting behind the tree and again, I'm gonna have my wireless remote with me. I'm gonna hold my light tube behind the tree, just like this right here. Now there's a lot of different things we can do here. We can use different light tubes if we want, or I can simply just move it like this right here. And really just about this slow as well. And I'm going to turn, 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 and bring it up. And then rotate around until it's out of the way of the tree. And this should give us some really interesting lights. Now, 
when I'm done with that rotation, I can come this way if I want, and it'll make a nice kind of wave effect. I can also kind of hide this behind the tree and really bring some light to the scene. Now the other thing I can do, which I plan to do, is I'm gonna use that little toy, um, that little toy sword thing that I've got, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it and I can get behind this tree right here where you really can't see the light source, but the light will illuminate the area behind it. Now it'll be a different color. So we're just gonna play with this and experiment with it and have some fun. I got in late last night and went to bed even later. Why? Because I had to see those images. With all that light swirling around, I wasn't sure what the results would look like. But I can tell you this, I really, really like some of those shots. Now, that's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying they're award-winning or anything like that. But they were creative and original, and this really opened up a whole new door of creativity for me. Now, I've been thinking since doing this last night just about all the things I can introduce to night photography. I'm thinking about doing photo stacking and other light sources. If you'd like to see me do more videos on this topic, just let me know in the description below and we'll have a lot of fun doing it. Now, something I want to touch on real quick is how I illuminated my friend John on that park bench. So if you go back and look at that image, you'll see that I used the light tube and got the half circle behind him. And then we were blessed because we had uh, the ambient light coming from the parking lot in the distance, and that really helped to enhance the overall image. But I wanted to bring John into the forefront. I wanted you to be able to see him. So this is how I did it with my flashlight. All I did was turn it on and cover it with my hand. At this point, I'm facing John, and I gave John a countdown, three, two, one, took my hand away and just illuminated him for like a second or two and then covered it back up. Now I did this on the right side and the left side and that really helped to bring John into focus. Now what's key here is for John to hold perfectly still and he did and that worked out really, really well. Now you gotta play with this a little bit. Is it one second, two seconds or three seconds, right? But this is a game of creativity and there's a lot of variables that go on here and so 
if you don't get it right to begin with, don't worry about it. Just keep trying and you'll land those shots. It's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to post a link in the description below with regards to a flashlight and some of those tubes, if I can find some of the tubes out there for you. Just in case you don't live near a big box store and you just want to order them online, that's what it's all about. Now I'm on Instagram and if you're not following me over there, go ahead and do so because I share a lot of images out there and we'll just have some fun over there. Now if this video has helped you out and you found it enjoyable, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.